Hi everyone, we're back with Vintage Made Modern, and today we're going to talk about Chapter 7. And this chapter is titled, A Thimble Full of Beauty. So I'm going to share with you, first of all, on the chapter opener, each month there's a modern notion essay where I share my reflection on the vintage content that follows in the vintage notions essay. And in this chapter, I got to share talking about one of my favorite places to visit, Torch Lake, Michigan. And I also got to talk about ice cream. And that's Higgins General Store, my favorite spot for ice cream up north. Over to July, and you'll see these beautiful graphics of embroidery along this page, bottom of this page with the quote, there is no cosmetic for beauty like happiness. Lady Blessington. And that was in one of the vintage booklets that the Women's Institute had published, whether it be the Fashion Service or the Inspiration Magazine they published each month. So where did this embroidery, where did I find this? I'm gonna share the dresser scarf that this came off of with you. And this is what it looked like. And you can see it's just in wonderful condition. Um, beautiful embroidery, a little crocheted edge. And you can, this could be placed as a table runner or on the top of a dresser. But again, I loved the red, white, and blue. And we, each month or each chapter in the Vintage Notions book has a themed colorway. And so this month, you can imagine, we have some blues and some reds. Another fabulous piece of art that's in the book. And this is one of the illustrations that we then went in and recolored beautiful view from the deck of a boat with sailboats in the background. It kind of reminds me of maybe taking the ferry over to Mackinac Island in the summer. And then you'll see down in the corner, there's this embroidered rose. So where did the rose come from? Another vintage textile to share. Here we have it. And this was a little, probably hand towel, created with both applique and an accent of embroidery and a border along the bottom. So just thought it would be fun to share those with you. This essay called Beauty Spots is one that has some quotes that really spoke to me. So I wanted to share a few, just read to you a little bit out of the out of the essay. And this was written by Mary Brooks Pickin. And Mary Brooks Pickin was born in Kansas and grew up in Kansas. So she, and I'm in Kansas, um, she wrote about the pioneers. And what did she say about Kansas? Kansas is a great state and much of its greatness today is due to love and unselfishness of the far vision pioneers. So I want to share a couple words that reference beauty. Make beauty come to you through your desire to express it, through your thoughts, deeds, motives, acts, industries, and desires. All can express beauty if beauty is in the heart. This one too. Give smiles if you have nothing else. Learn to love people and their little ways. Love your folks and your work, and you will be doing a big part of what God wants you to do. So words of wisdom, we move on to the inspiration department in the chapter. And I wanted to share this illustration because the detail in this piece of art for the time you can see it's a beautiful collection of fashion and um, an outdoor scene. Looking One's Best is the title of that inspiration essay. Then we move on to Frozen Desserts for Warm Weather and a little story of making homemade ice cream as well as some other delicious, cool desserts. This fabric was a fun one too, since we're talking about some textiles, I thought I'd share that. So you can see this is a piece it's, I imagine it was just yardage, um, and I can't tell the width of the fabric. One way to identify the age of a fabric is by how wide 
the fabric is salvage to salvage because the goods were originally made 36 inches wide before the 45 inch wide fabric we have now. Um, but this is a piece that was just cut out of the middle of some yardage. But again, a really fun modern retro pattern that is part of the, the many fabrics in my collection and I wanted to share. So moving on, we're gonna talk about the pajama mode. And this was in the instruction department and you can see here profiting from the pajama mode. Those of us are go who are going down to the beach this summer may have beach pajamas to match our moods. So beach pajamas, that sounds like a wonderful piece of clothing to me. Um, and what you're gonna see here on this page is an illustration that is from a rights bias booklet showing that pajama mode. Um, and th with that pajama mode came the introduction of trousers and women wearing trousers. And they did this in the casual um, beach summer wear as well as that eventually moved into everyday wear for, for women. And what we have here is, I'm gonna show you a few of the illustrations and where this illustration came from. I will say the article that we have here is Fashion Service and it's 1929. And this illustration was, and the article is from the Women's Institute. So the pajama mode was happening and um, I just came upon this illustration to, um, Share. So this is what a, a Wright's Bias Fold Trimming Booklet was. And these booklets were for sale for a very low cost um, that you could buy and advertised along with the bias tape that you would buy. Um, but this is the uh, my marker out there. This was the illustration that we then scanned and went on the page in our book. And you can see here a group of pajamas, and then it says here how to use the pattern sheet. So these little booklets also came with a fold out sheet that gave you patterns to sew with. And I have collected almost all of these booklets and the illustrations are timeless, exquisite pieces of art showing fashion, showing techniques, um, all sorts of things, but they all relate to using bias in different ways, whether the bias is decorating the garment or potentially making the bar garment. And I'll flip through a couple more pages of, it shows home projects for the home with bias. Um, it also shows, here's some lingerie with bias. Um, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later because there's a lingerie pattern for the magic patterns. Here's some senior dresses, maybe for graduation. You can see these colorations and illustrations just are so charming. And here are the little girls, junior dresses. What else do we have? Oh, this one has the hollyhocks. And this is models for the 10 year old. But again, then we have a group for the four year olds just darling. So again, William, William Wright's bias tape. So pajamas, I did wanna tell you about a few of the patterns we offer at Indigo Junction that you could wear as your own beach pajamas, maybe today. Um, and one of them is actually called the slight, or called the slumber party PJs. So this is the slumber party PJs pattern. And it actually is the same top that is our slight sleeve pattern. But think about this. You could make this top as a beach cover up, extend the length of the bodice and add side slits and you have yourself a really cute top to wear over your suit or lounge around. Um, so that is the slumber party PJs. We also have a traditional kimono robe pattern that I'm gonna show you here. And this pattern offers three different lengths of the robe and the option to add contrasting trim on the front placket and the sleeve cuff. So. Again, very versatile pattern, great for spa, great for the beach, for the pool. And one more is our easy top. 
And this easy top pattern can be also tunic length. And so my thought is you could make this out of a fabulous gauze so many great gauze fabrics on the market right now. And what a wonderful, cool cover-up that would be. Make it short too. So you can make it as a top. You could wear it as PJs. It could be just a nightshirt. So, so many options for some of these basic patterns we offer at Indigo Junction. Well, back to the book. Let's see what else we have. And we are gonna flip over to talk about accessories next. And there's a little more about beauty that you'll wanna read up on. And then we have this wonderful page of showing all these different accessories that the Women's Institute would give advice on or give design ideas. They would actually um, to explain the fabric that they're showing or maybe how they finished it and add details. And so that's what you'll see through these descriptions, um, whether it be with related to fabric or trimmings, lots of really good ideas that really you can bring into your modern sewing. Just need a little inspiration from Mary Brooks Pickin and the Women's Institute, right? All right, it's time for the magic pattern. And today it is the bias, magic bias slip for summer frocks. And this is a great pattern. We have actually made it up in several samples, really simple style that can be, actually you could make it into a sundress, but here they are showing it as a slip. And if you notice on the illustration, you'll see some, again, where some of that, um, this illustration also came from the rights, one of those rights bias booklets that I showed you earlier. All right, I think we're wrapping up here. One more little article about from the Department of Housekeeping about laundry. This is the way we wash our clothes. Glad we don't have to wash them the way they used to wash them. Once you read this article, you'll know why. And then always remember at the end of each chapter, we offer, offer testimonials from students that were part of the school and they're called Just Among Ourselves. And be sure to visit those in your book. And remember, you can get Vintage Notions. We'll put the links to the in our description of this video and we appreciate you watching the series and would love for you to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we'll share the rest of the chapters in the book. We're halfway through now, so I'm very excited that this has turned into a fun and informational event for so many people. Thanks for watching.